Hi, welcome to Midnight Farmhouse. I'm Leanne, and if you're new to my channel, I do cooking and baking from scratch, canning and dehydrating videos. Today, we're gonna to be canning some cherry jam, sweet cherry jam from the ball book. In time for August Jamboree and using four jar lids. They've been nice enough to sponsor this collaboration of August Jamboree, sponsored by Prepper Potpourri, and today, we're going to be making some cherry, ger cherry jam because I think it will be fabulous on pork, which is another video. So let me walk you through using four jar lids to can sweet cherry jam. For our adventure today, we'll be using the Ball Canning Back to Basics book on page 26 for sweet cherry jam. All you need for this recipe is two and a half cups of fresh or frozen chopped pitted dark sweet cherries, two tablespoons of lemon juice, three tablespoons of pectin, and three and a half cups of sugar. And we got it all right here. Let's get to canning, shall we? The recipe calls for two and two third cups of frozen or fresh chopped cherries that are pitted. So what I'm doing is just pulsing it in the food processor to get it chopped. It can't get any easier than this, folks. Six quart pot for this that's heavy bottom, and we're gonna throw our cherries in the pot and our lemon juice. We're gonna put in our pectin. Three tablespoons. This makes a very small batch. I think it only said it made four half pint jars. I'm going to bring this to a boil that we can't stir down. Then we'll add in our sugar. And as I'm waiting for this to boil, I went downstairs and got my jars and I'm filling up the sink to wash them. Because you don't want to wash your jars no sooner than 10 minutes before you start canning. Bring it to a boil and you want to constantly keep stirring it so it doesn't grow tight to the pan and it's going to start to foam. And if the foaming bothers you, you can throw no more than a tablespoon of butter in there. But that's just for looks. I guess it's just because store-bought stuff doesn't have foam on it. So who knows what they put in their jam or jelly. But you're going to know what is in your jam and jelly if you make this. Alright, as you can see is boiling as I'm stirring. So we're gonna throw in our sugar. All three and a half cups. I had a question myself. <laughs> that looks so good. Mm. And you can use this on ice cream, you can do this in cheesecake. The possibilities are endless with baked goods. Maybe stuffed French toast with cream cheese. I bet that would be exciting. I've been wanting to make that. But my husband only eats breakfast on Sundays. And I have to go help him with the barn work on Sunday mornings. So I can't be adventurous when making breakfast. So I have to think of creative ways to keep it hot while we're at the barn. All right, once you get it back up to a boil, we're gonna hit a minute for a time. And we're gonna get our pot on to heat up. 
I'm not even using a water bath canner today just because I've already had water in this for something else. But I didn't use it. So we're stirring. Take it off the burner. I'm just using what I would use to freeze my vegetables to can my jelly. Now you're going to fill up all your jars in a quarter inch head space. And you want to do this on a towel so it's easy cleanup. Ask me how I know. such an easy project. I bet you can do it with your kids or grandkids and they'll be all inspired and create great memories. All right. I'll set the funnel aside. And use a debubbler to check your headspace you want a quarter inch and you want to make sure you're debubbling your jam all right we're going to take our wet paper towel and wipe our rims and on our four jar lids and it's going to be hot Make sure you do it fingertip tight. And I lost my dart lifter. There it is. All right. The jam into the camera. There we go. Put it on top. And then into the canner we'll go. So you don't always have to use your water bath canner. To can with. If you have a steam canner, you can use that for jams and jellies and save water and electricity because it takes less time to um, boil. And if you have to pay for water, that's a bonus right there. Isn't that special when you use a quilted jar? Our last jar here. All right, and I'm loving these four jar lids. I've used them three times now, and no fails. Can't say that about other canning lids right now. All right. Definitely have that one and a half inch of water above the lids. So we're gonna put the lid on, clean up our mess, and wait for it to come to a boil. We are almost to that rapid boil. This is definitely a boil, but we want it fiery mass. All right, now we're up to that full boil. So let's set our timer for 10 minutes. And if you're above a thousand feet, you need to adjust accordingly. And if you please research your altitude before starting canning. Very important to know that. All right, when your timer goes off, turn the timer off, of course, and then remove your lid and turn off your burner. Then we're going to set a timer for five minutes. All right, the time is up. And then we want to grab our jar lifters and you just want to pull it straight out and transfer to a mat on the counter.
and you don't want to worry about the liquid that's on top, it will evaporate soon enough. You don't want to tip your jar because you don't want the jam running out of the jar and losing its seal. I didn't know that in the beginning of my canning journey by myself. All right. Look at those beautiful jars of cherry jam. Where's the cracker? You have to open a whole sleeve for that. You really want a cracker? Hey, you can't put jam on, just eat it. If you would like to try for jar lids, use our code MIDNIGHT10 at checkout for 10% off your order. Pretty good. Never had cherry jam before. Thanks so very much for watching. Remember, God gave you a great day. Now go do something great with it.